Hi everybody. So what do you make when you don't feel like doing anything at all? How about a quick pizza? Tonight we're going to be putting this out on the grill. I have some store-bought pizza dough and you can see $2.99. It hardly works to have to make it on your own. And I've set a ball of it into a bowl. and It's been sitting to come to room temperature and expand a little bit. For, it's been sitting in this bowl about two hours. I have some sauce that's just a quick pizza sauce. You could also open a can. And I'll cut about a quarter of this big lump of polio mozzarella. So let me get this all assembled, and then I'll show you how I spread out the pizza dough on our peel. Be right back. Now, let's begin. I've got the peel set, and I'm going to put a little bit of cornmeal on. The cornmeal acts like little ball bearings, and it keeps the pizza dough from sticking to the peel. So you can put the peel, you can put the dough directly on the pizza stone, which will also have a little bit of cornmeal. And I try to make it a little bit even. Now, our pizza stone, tonight is only 12 inches, so I'm going to try to keep this pizza smallish, on the smallish side, which means that it's going to be more like a New York style pizza than a Neapolitan. This is really quite, quite doughy and quite stretchy. Nice. Much more lively than the sourdough pizza, the stuff that I make. So this might be a whole lot of fun. Hmm. Now, why am I making pizza so often? Well, we went into one of the pizza shops in town and to eat in for a 12 inch pizza, not even like a 16 inch one or an 18 inch one or a super, a super Papa John's, they were $24 with no toppings. So for $2.99 and a little bit of cheese and a little bit of sauce, I think we can just do better. Now, this is kind of a lot of dough. And I think it's going to be way more bready than I care to have it. But let's see how it works out. Okay, I'm going to spread it out. This seems like it's going to have quite a, a lot of pizza dough on the edges. Okay, we'll check it out. You can see it's bubbling up so we know that the yeast is active. And I'm going to really crimp it on the edges try to press this down nicely. There we go. Look at that bubbling up already. Now we've set the grill, because we'll be cooking this outside. We've turned it on and we're going to wait till it gets to be about 500 degrees and the pizza stone will be on the grill also heating to 500 degrees. Let's see how this works out. Now I'm going to give it a little drizzle of olive oil. It's about the end of my olive oil too. There we go. The olive oil just gives it a little bit of extra umami texture. And since I'm not putting anything extra on this, except the sauce. You could use a canned sauce. This is one that I made the other night. It's a can of tomatoes and a can of tomato sauce and I cooked it down with some of the fresh dried oregano, a little bit of thyme, and I think about two cloves of garlic. And I cooked it down till 
it was, um, you know, nice texture, not too thick and not too watery because we don't want the pizza's dough to get to be soggy, but we do want it to have flavor. Now, what happens if your local grocer doesn't have pizza dough? Then by all means, find a recipe that's easy for you and make it. It'll last in the fridge up to two weeks. Or just do what everybody else does. Get a loaf of good Italian bread or some English muffins and make yourself little cocktail-sized pizzas. Pita breads work also. In fact, they make quite lovely pizzas. Okay, and here's some of the cheese. I did about a third of that large, that large lump of polio, and I don't think I'm going to use all of it. But here we go. That's all there is to it. Now, let me move the camera, and I'll show you what it looks like sliding off this peel, and get it ready to get done outside. That's really all there is to homemade pizza. All right, we'll put some extra cornmeal on the pizza stone. Its temperature is up to about 450, and Ken is going to get the pizza and we'll slide it right on. And here it is, that beautiful pizza. I was concerned that I made the pizza a little bit too big, but we'll be back in about 12 minutes. Here it is after 10 minutes. It needs at least five minutes more. And Whoa. here it is. Whoa. Yeah. What do you think? Whoa. That was very doughy. Look at that. I don't know. I guess this it's was a whole lot of lively dough. You want to leave it on a little bit longer? Um, it's kind of yeah. I think it's soupy in the middle, mm. but it's getting crispy on the bottom. All right. Another couple minutes. Okay. And here it comes, boy. Yes. It's puffy. It almost looks like a bouffant pizza. Yes. Yes, I think. It smells good. It's comes off very easily. Soupy in the middle. But it's soupy in the middle. Hmm. All right, so we'll know what to do next time we use the dough. I think I'll turn it into two pizzas instead of one. Before we put it on, I gave it a little shot of extra oil. So Ken is sopping up the looseness on top. And let's see if it will let it settle down, and then he'll cut it. It's got a whole lot more dough than we're used to. So I think that this is enough to make a very large pizza or two pizzas of this size. And here's the telling. It's here's the tell. It's crisp all the way through, so it's not soggy. And that's a surprise. It sounds crisp in the middle when you cut it too, right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, that looks pretty good, Ken. Let's see. And here it is, coming onto the plate. Oh my. Well, it certainly looks That's well done. 
That's a tiny little piece for you. Well, not anymore. <laughs>